welcome to Zipping TikTok Band. Welcome to Zipping to Soccer Band. Hi, welcome to something to talk about. And uh, yeah, we're doing another Let's Talk About the Difference. And we're covering it, Marin Effing Trant. I'm not going to swear that early in the show. So, yeah, this guy. So I'm going to talk about uh, his show version and then his book version. I'm going to do the show version kind of uh, condensed. Show version, I'm going to cover mostly everything um, for that we have for him in the books, everything he did. First, I will show you House Trant itself. We'll do a little video for that. And um, so much of this guy is like, he was there when Cersei walked from this place to this place. And it's like, all right, I'm going to try to condense. Like, he does Kingsguard stuff. <laughs> like, I'm not just going to keep doing that. He stood in front of this door. Then he walked over here. And then he stood in front of that door. Then he walked over here. <laughs> That's a lot of what he did. Um, And then at the end, I'm going to really highlight the major differences. And there's a pretty major difference for this one. <laughs> Pretty, pretty massive difference, actually. So let's first talk about House Trant, because this is one of my favorite sigils. Uh, House Trant sigil is insane. It's just a dude being hanged, uh, hung. Hanged is when you hang, is it hung when you hung like a tapestry and hanged is when you hang a person? Yeah, he's being hanged. He's a hangman. There you go. Um, he, he's a gallows knight. Uh, that's a Dunkin' Egg joke for you, for you folk. Uh, House Trant of uh, Gallows Gallows Gray. Awesome name, dude. These guys are awesome. I love these dudes. I would love to be part of House Trant. Like, they're just so metal. Uh, Gallows Gray is a noble family from the Stormlands. Uh, they are one of the principal houses sworn to uh, House Baratheon of Storm's End. According to the Citadel website, um, so this isn't from the show, but it's close enough, or from the books, but close enough. According to the Citadel, the seat of House Trant is Gallows Gray. And their words are, so end our foes. They blazon their shields with azure, a hanged man sable. All right. There we go. I don't know sigil words. I talk about sigils constantly. Whenever it's like, ah, oh, they blazon it with an azure, sinister. I'm like, yeah, words. <laughs> it's just it's a cool hanged guy. I don't need to know the cool words to understand it. All right. So. Uh, trigger warning for this one. If you've watched the show, I'm not going to discuss anything past that. That's what the trigger warning is for, is for the show. So if you've seen the show, I'm going to discuss that. If you haven't seen the show and you can handle, or you can't really handle some more messed up stuff, I don't say any of the words. I do try to kind of gloss over it, but in order to the cover of the character, I do have to say some violent stuff. So trigger warning there. And, um, yeah, skip until you don't see, uh, the, the, you know, the show face anymore, if you don't want to hear it. And then I'll discuss it again at the end. So I guess, I guess that wouldn't work. All right, cool. So, uh, show at Marin F and Trant. That's a, uh, that's a hound joke. Yep. There we go. Um, in the television adaptation, Marin is played by Ian, um, Batty, right? It's a great name. Um, he is in seasons one through five. We first see him uh, interrupting Arya's dance le lesson. Well, we see him like around, right? But like the first like real scene is after Ned gets betrayed. He interrupts the dance lesson and Ciro Farrell um, defends Arya with only a wooden practice sword and disables all the Lannister guardsmen with him, guardsmen with him uh, to uh, Marin's fury and disbelief we don't see what happens next but most assume that Marin kills him because we don't see Cyril Pharrell anymore and Cyril even though he's Cyril even though he was such a good swordsman you know he just had a one sword so yeah I mean you could beat up some Lannister guardsmen but an actual trained knight might be a little difficult with a wooden sword even Marin Trant um there is a debate that I don't cover of how good of a fighter Marin Trant is because it's like his only feat he, he Beat a guy with a wooden sword? We don't know. I'm not going to say I know. He's not. De he's definitely not talked about, well, except for on the show, but he's not really talked about in the books like he's really awful, like Boris Blount. But they do kind of state there isn't really a good fighter anymore on the Kingsguard. Like, none of them are super great. Um, but it, it's one of those big debates in the community, and I... I stand I stand out of it. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. 
notes, whatever. Uh, just figure it out. <laughs> All right. Um, Sir Marin is present when Joffrey shows Sansa uh, her father's head on a spike. In return, she insults him, so he orders Sir Marin to hit Sansa instead because he's like, my mom says I can't hit a lady. Sir Marin, God, it's a scene. It's a scene. Uh, when Sir Dantos arrives drunk for his bout, Joffrey orders Marin to pour a barrel of wine down Dantos' throat. And it goes on like this. Uh, he beats people up for his crappy king, including Sansa again, until Sir, uh, Tyrion stops it. Uh, he's around in the background during the riot. And then when um, walking the king around and stuff, like he's just like around. Um, Marin also speaks as a witness at the trial of Tyrion Lannister. Uh, he tells the court how Tyrion slapped and insulted Joffrey during the riots, which isn't a lie. Um, the only people I know of that actually lie during Tyrion's trial is Shay and um, Tyena Merriweather. Everybody else just, they tell half-truths, you know? Like, they don't ever state why Tyrion smacks Joffrey, but it's like, Tyrion smacked Joffrey. That part's true. He doesn't say because he was having us beat up a child. <laughs> they, they leave that part out, but, you know, whatever. It's a, little, it's a girl, who cares? That's a joke for this awful society. I care. All right. Um, dude is a monster. <laughs> they just they, they go that route. So uh, later on, I believe this is season six, when or five, uh, when Mace Tyrell is assigned to uh, negotiate a deal concerning the Crown's debt with the Iron Bank of Bravos. Cersei assigns Marin to escort Mace to Bravos. When Trant arrives in Bravos, flanked by some Lannister soldiers, she is spot. He is spotted by Arya Stark, who uh, recognizes him immediately, and she's like, "I want to, I want to take care of that guy." Taking some time off, Marin and his Lannister men enter a brothel to ease their stress. Uh, here's the trigger warning thing: if you haven't already read it, <laughs> read the screen. Uh, Sir Marin is offered multiple. Um, I usually change the word to sex workers, sex workers, but he declines them for being too old Ugh. until a very young girl is offered. The next night, Marin returns to the Bravo where he beats three girls with like a, a stick. It's brutal. Um, he has been provided with for his amusement. The first two cry out, but the third remains stoic and doesn't cry out. He sends the other two away and uh, the the third girl pulls her face up, and it's revealing that she's Arya wearing a girl face. She repeatedly stabs Trant in the eyes and chest and um, muzzles the screams with the cloth. It's super brutal. That whole scene's brutal. It's um, it's something. And uh, we'll get to it again in the differences, but it's, uh, it's a really hard to watch scene, especially when you're a person with daughter or daughters like me. It's like, I don't know. Seeing violence on young girls, it's a little rough. Um, but yeah, and then and then the violence on Marin, it's like, ooh, she's going ham on that face. All right, uh, let's get back to the books. So, um, Sir Marin Trant is a knight from House Trant and a member of the King's Guard for uh, Robert the First Baratheon. King Marin has a dour face with a sour mouth. He's dour and sour, and pouchy bags under his droopy eyes. Oh man, I get you. Uh, I feel that way right now. Um, he has rusty red hair spotted with gray and rust-colored beard. Marin is tall and somber. Uh, he is a knight of the King's Guard. Marin's armor consists of a shirt of enameled scales chased with gold and a tall helm with a golden sunburst crest. That's cool. His uh, greaves, uh, gorget, and gauntlets and boots are a gleaming plate. Marin's heavy wool cloak is classed with a uh, golden lion. Huh, weird. Uh, he wields a long sword and carries a shield. Sir uh, Jamie Lannister considers that Marin uh, sly and cruel, and Sansa Stark finds him uncaring and cold. Marjorie Tyrell thinks that Marin is old and slow. Well, she's not wrong. Lord Varys and Tyrion consider Marin loyal to Queen Cersei Lannister. Marin is obedient and loyal to commands. As long as it's from the right person, right? Good yeah, come from the right guy. So, uh, Robert's King's Guard. Sir uh, Marin accompanies Robert Baratheon to the wall to ask Ned Stark to marry him or something. Whatever Robert goes up there. He. <laughs> He is then defeated in the hands tourney later on in that book at King's Landing by Loras Tyrell after beating Harwin. He beats 
Harwin of of uh, Ned's northern, uh, which word am I looking for? Guards of his of his house guards of Ned's house guard Harwin, Marin Tramp, man. I love Harwin. <laughs> That's all I had. Uh, amid the arrest of uh, Ed, Edard Stark and Robert's death, Cersei Lannister sends Marin with five red cloaks to apprehend Arya Stark. Ooh, in the small hall. Syria Frel uh, defeats the five guardsmen with a wooden sword. The unarmed, uh, unarmored Serio then attacks Marin, but is unable to harm the knight through his plate. After Marin breaks Serio's wooden sword with his own long sword, a crying Ario, Arya follows, um, or, sorry, follows Serio's orders to flee from the Tower of the Hand. Um, it's, it, this is pretty much the same, right? It's pretty much the exact same scene as in the show, right? So he beats up the zoos with the wooden sword and then he's like, a girl needs to leave or whatever he says. And she's like, a girl's gonna listen. And Marin Tran's like, ooh, buddy, my sword's way less wooden than yours. And then it cuts. Um, King Joffrey uses Marin to beat Sansa Stark into obedience. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, knight is present in the throne room uh, when Sir uh, Barrison Selmy is dismissed by the King's Guard, uh, and he laughs at his former uh, Storm brother shame. Yeah, and and that's he's in that scene too in the show, and he's like, "I carved you guys, I carved through a kick because Barrison's awesome." I just left it out because you know that's that's Barrison's scene, not not Marin's. Marin's just there. Okay, Marin's just there for most of this story. I don't know if you guys noticed, but so far I've just been saying, and Marin's there, except for the serial for Elving. And that's going to be pretty much everything else. Sir uh, Marin rides in the joust during the tourney uh, uh King Joffrey's names day, name day. He breaks two lances with Sir Harbor, Hobber, Slobber, Slobber Redwine, on horsing him in the second pass. When Tyrion Lannister, the acting hand, uh, King's Hand, goes to the bedchamber of his sister queen regent Cersei Lannister. He finds Marin uh, guarding the door with Cersei inside with the sibling's cousin, Sir Lancel Lannister. Ooh! Um, acting on King Joffrey's orders, Marin flings Danto's hollered away from Sansa who, uh, so that Sir uh, Boros Blount can strike the girl. Tyrion intercedes, however. Yeah, that's... <sighs> Marin's story is just so much of it's like, he's either hitting somebody for Joffrey or he's holding somebody back so Boris Blount can hit somebody for Joffrey. Lovely. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> Marin and Boros protect Cersei when her daughter Marcella Baratheon sails to Dorne. The royal possession is attacked uh, in its return to the Red Keep. However, in Marin's white cloak is torn from his back during the ensuing riots. Uh, in King's Landing. So he's there for the, the bread riots. Um, Tyrion orders Marin and Boros. They're like the, the team. Marin and Boros. They're like a, they're just like a buddy cop. This whole book, all these books, secretly is a buddy cop comedy of Marin and Boros. Um, one played by Eddie Murphy and the other one played by Nick Nolte. That's what this is. You guys just don't know. You don't know that yet. That's going to be revealed later on in the books, right after our post Alec was J. Um, where was I? Tyrion orders um, the buddy cops to uh, search the city for missing Sansa, but the girl is safely returned to the Red Keep from Sandor Clegane. Marin and Osmond Kettle Black. See, he gets replaced. Uh, Nick Nolte gets replaced later on. Um, that stinks. Um, <laughs> Marin and Osmond Kettle Black guard at King Joffrey during the Battle of the Blackwater. After the battle, Marin, Osmond, and Sir Balon Swan spend hours at night, more than 600 men. Ooh, man, your shoulder would get tired after that. When uh, the knight loyal to Stannis Brathian accuses... When a knight loyal to Stannis Brathian accuses Joffrey of being an abomination born of incest, Tywin Lannister has Marin stab the accuser in the chest. Yay! Hey, sometimes when you're not beating people up for Joffrey, you're killing people for Tywin. All right. Oh, man, King's Guards, am I right? Uh... Arya hates Marin for what he did to Sirio, rightly, and she adds the knight's name to her little list, her little list of people she wants dead. Um, all right. <laughs> now we got Lord Commander's return. He does normal Kingsguard stuff. 
as if not all this is that, like getting, uh, like guarding Mager's hold fast for people to meet or escorting Sansa to her forced marriage after uh, Joffrey marries uh, Marjorie Tyrell at the Great Sept of Baelor, Meryn and Loras lead the uh, royal possession back to the Red Keep for uh, the wedding feast. When Joffrey begins choking to death in the feast, Meryn tries to save the boy by prying his mouth open and jamming a spoon down his throat. That's some good doctoring. <laughs> After Jamie arrives back in King's Landing, Marin is uh, criticized for uh, failing to protect the two monarchs in Jamie's absence. During the trial of um, uh, Tyrion, Marin accounts the story of Tyrion threatening the king's life. That's also a similarity from the show. Later in the White Sword Tower, Marin expresses his belief that Joffrey was poisoned by wine. Jamie criticizes him for having followed. Uh, Joffrey's orders to beat Sansa, and he orders Meryn to obey only himself, Queen Cersei, and Lord Tywin Lannister. So he's like, Joffrey's already dead, but I don't want you doing any more beating up of, of, of teenage girls. It's messed up. The show doesn't take that advice. But <laughs> Jesus. All right. Uh, this guy, this guy's such a fun character to cover. Ugh. Tom, <laughs> Tommen's Kingsguard. After a Lord uh, Tywin is found dead uh, in the Tower of the Hand, Marin guards the apartments of uh, the Hand of the King. Cersei orders Marin to find Lord Varys. Uh, at he has departed from the Red Keep, so he finds Lord Varys, but he has departed from the Red Keep. I can't talk. Marin guards more doors and escorts more people around and to a wedding feast. Um, when dwarfs' heads are brought to the keep, he's there. Uh, one of the heads he, uh, one of the head bringers loses a nose from him. Okay, that's fantastic. And uh, when the king gets new cats, he's also there. He's just around. He's escorted people. He's checking out some dwarf head deliveries. He's checking out some new kitty cats. He's just being a king's guard. That's his whole story. All right. <laughs> okay um where was i you got new cats Mirren and cersei's group when oh so Mirren is with cersei's group when they visit the great Septa baylor to meet the new high septum the high sparrow if you will and she has him gently remove sparrows from the, her litter when a sparrow grabs Mirren's wrist and asks him to support the faith of the seven, he wrenches himself free. Cersei prevents him from attacking a sparrow with his sword. Just gonna kill him. Why not? Um, Marin Trent. Marin is in audience when Cersei has Pycelle publicly admit that Queen Marjorie is not a maiden. It's uh, doxing, isn't it? Is that not a, maybe? Maybe that's not doxing, but it's not cool. Um, it's not cool. To prevent Marin from uh, potentially serving as Marjorie's champion as a member of the Kingsguard, Cersei intends for him to feign illness. Fake sick if she tries to get you. Uh, later, Marin is present in the Red Keep when Cersei um, completes her Walk of Atonement. Yeah, he, he gets to watch that awful stuff. Marin also, at the end of the books, guards the Hand's apartments in Magor's Holdfast on the night of the deaths of Pycelle and Kevin Lannister, um, Tommen's new uh, Lord Regent. So he must not have did a good, a good job. He's guarding the door. Two really important people get killed. <laughs> he wasn't guarding it well. That's it. That's his whole story. And so much of it was like, and Marin is there. He has like to the killing Sirio and then like shoving a spoon down to uh, Joffrey's throat. That's kind of it, and getting yelled at. He gets yelled at by Joffrey, and he stands places. He, he doesn't drink, and he doesn't know things. So let's talk about the differences. The only major similarity is that he uh, is him killing Sarah Pharrell and him just guarding stuff. So that's kind of it. Oh, and also he talks at the trial. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know why I was about to riff. It's all right here. And then they give gave Arya's murdering of Rafford. So that's out of the, the um, Winds of Winter sample chapters is when Arya kills Rap the Sweetling. And I just re-listened to that chapter for writing this. And um, yeah, so instead of giving it to Rap the Sweetling, they give it here. 
to to Marin. Um, so yeah, Book of Marin is a. Oh, where was I? Oh yeah, okay. So uh, uh, they gave Arya's murdering a Rafford to Mar Marin, and in the process, decided to make him an absolute monster. Yeah. Book of Marin is a bit boring. He has one big moment, and then he guards stuff. That's fine. He's a guard. So I see why they killed him off, because he doesn't really do too much. He is a more uh, uh, noticeable face than Raph, and I believe they already killed off Raph, right? Um, and Arya has a reason to hate him for killing Syria. And Raph, in the Winds chapter is just gross, <laughs> but he's not that monstrous. Right? Uh, he roughly tries to assault Arya, who's posing as a mummer named Mercy. That's what happens in the wind sample chapter. So I think it's fine that they killed Marin if he was standing in that place. But turning him into one of the worst people uh, ever was needless, I think. Having him seek young Mercy for rough sex is greasy enough. Like, that's already disgusting enough. Mercy's young, and Raph definitely does not come off as a good guy in that chapter, right? But beating kids before assaulting them, it's just too dang much. I assume it makes Arya look like less of a cold-blooded murderer, the more evil Marin is. I'm assuming that's the only reason to make this change, because... She kind of just, like, goes willy-nilly and kills people in Bravos. Spoilers, but she does. Like, you know, um, the one dude who's, like, uh, I know the symbolism of why she kills, um, not Marillion, is Marillion? The, the Night's Watch guy, right? I know why she would kill him, right? It's not Marillion. Um, you guys are all telling me who it is right now. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> I can't remember all of the lore at the top of my head. I gotta write something down. Um, so, uh... She kills that dude just for, like, abandoning the Night's Watch, right? And then when she kills Raph, it's... He does he definitely doesn't come off like an innocent guy. Like, he's really creepy towards Mercy, who's who's a younger mummer. She's not even a sex worker. And, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna... Uh, um, and I'm not saying that violence is good against sex workers. I hope you know that's not what I meant. <laughs> I meant he's trying to get... Um, get sex from just somebody and he's extremely nasty about it. That all being said, it's nowhere near near as horrible as they make Marin in the show. Like this, like ever, I'm not going to repeat it a hundred times, but what he does in the show is just really bad. So I'm assuming the reason why they do that is if they make him more evil, it makes her not look like a cold blooded murderer who's just murking people left and right. Um, for, well, not left and right, but you know what I mean. I feel like you're getting everything I'm putting down. And I don't need to keep talking about Marin Evan Trant. Uh, he's not a fun character, and he's actually really boring in the books. He gets that one moment. And then in the show, they did all the boring stuff, and they give him something really awful and make him just one of the biggest monsters in the whole show. Um, so that's that's fantastic. That makes my job of talking about a song of and fire characters really fun. <laughs> I, I, I'm joking. I love doing it. You guys know that. So uh, thank you for watching. That was my What's the Difference for Marin Trant. It was very fun. And um, yeah, let me know what characters you want me to cover. And also keep watching all my other stuff I got going on. So that's all I got. Peace.